support of the Joint Committees on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions, Finance, National Planning and Appropriation on the State of the Economy. The report, which also emerged from an interaction with the President's economic management team, recommended the urgent need to bring down inflation. This issue of high cost of living is real. All of us here operate from the market, whether you go directly or you, you say your relative or your stewards. My problem, sir, is that the, poly, the agreements already reached between the federal government and labor with regards to the 35,000 naira increase in salaries, I was told as of yesterday it was only paid twice. What is happening to the uh, additional naira that is accruing, that is accruing to the federation account? Even local governments, their grants, their allocations they are from, the federal, from the federation account has increased. They should also go out there, procure grants and distribute. This I mean, the, what we have at hand is not the sole responsibility of the federal government to solve. The entire system must come together, must collaborate to make sure we do the needful. Before we conclude this debate today, the rate of Naira may have moved to 1,900. What does this suggest? We're in a state of emergency when it comes to management of our economy, something must be wrong. The debate gathered momentum following recommendations for further investigation into the 10 trillion Naira Anko Borora scheme, as well as the federal government's ways and means loans. The need for clarity became expedient. It is classified as obligation, 30 trillion. This debt overhang, Mr. President, is responsible for the problems we're having, which Nobody says he knows the detail how they spent that money outside 809 something billion with this parliament, this senate approved. We have colossal amount of money given to the banks and this amount runs into trillions of naira. Some of the governors have benefited from that 18 billion naira are here. The civil senator Ndume uh, you were there when the, uh, the ways and means were approved. Check, I was not there, check the record. And as I said, number one, wait now, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot approve illegality. What they did was illegal, the Senate doesn't have the right. Let it be on record. I was not there. I was not there. Take the record. I was not there, but you were there. I, but I was not there. I was not there. No one wanted to be culpable, but everyone was interested in the unfolding narrative. However, the former president of the Senate clarified the figures before a resolution is taken. What the Ninth National Assembly approved or ratified in terms of ways and means was not 29 or 30 trillion. It was 22, but there was 819 billion to attend to, to deal and address very serious infrastructural uh, dilapidations that we had across the country. So if we have a ways and means that is 30 today, that means something happened. Between then, and now, and it's for the National Assembly to find out what happened. Distinguished uh, colleagues, the motion has been moved and seconded that the ad hoc committee be set up to interrogate the, uh, the, the details of the ways and means, and the, the disbursements and usage, particularly the intervention programs such as the Anko Borowal program, such as excess funding in the power sector. Uh, such as monies given to uh, manufacturers and banks to show to, and the airlines and etc to show up, which of course uh, uh, increase the current uh, uh, debt profile of the country. Now, investigating the legality or otherwise of the Ways and Means loans was just part of the recommendations. The Senate committee also canvassed for more security, technology and incentives to farmers to boost agriculture productivity. Gloria Umezuki, Channels Television News.
Well, Senator Yusuf Yusuf joins us here this morning. He was a former chairman of the Senate Committee on Special Duties. Good morning and thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Well, nice to be around. We had your colleagues arguing there who, who was or who wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But clearly, you were there at the time, weren't you? I was. I so, was. was Senator Dumas also there? He said he wasn't. Well, he, he was a member of the Senate, and whether he was there or not there, I'm sure that day he must have signed to have been in the, in the, in the chamber. But whether he was there at the time of the debate or not is another thing. So, talk to us then about this, because this is a huge matter in this country. Many wonder, how could Senate, at this time, the Senate that you were in, how could they have allowed themselves or allowed that to happen under their watch? Well, thank you very much. You know, there's something they call doctrine of necessity. It has happened before, and that is what has actually happened. You see, there was this amount of 819 billion naira. Mm. It was to cover for, the, for infrastructural you know, decay. Now, whether uh, the need for it arose at that time, but there was necessity for that infrastructure, uh, infrastructural you know, expenditure at that point in time. And then it came in from the point of view of ways and means. That means federal government borrowing from CBN. So, and then that was added to the 22 trillion, you know, uh, that was outstanding at that material time. Yeah, but before the 18, some, 817, there about 819, yeah. the 22 had already been done. Yeah. Was, did the Senate approve it at the point? Well, you see, ways and means is a, is, is a critical factor in deficit financing. You know, and when, you know, uh, uh, we are talking about deficit budgeting, you know, uh, it is a deficiency in the in the in the in the, in the difference between expenditure and revenue that brings about the issue of waste and means. So federal government, you know, can approach CBN as its own banker, you know, for an overdraft. So, Without permission, approval from the Senate? Well, it, it ought to have been part and parcel of the budget before before be, before the approval of the budget. But in this case it wasn't. But, but in this case, you know, it didn't. Not because, you know, uh, 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 probably, you know, uh, uh, you know, it was a build-up. It is not just that 33 billion was just in one year. It was a build-up from 2015, you know, up till 2023. That's how it So they, they, they built it up at that time without approval up until the 817 or 19 came. Yes. Then they found out that, wait a minute, how did you get here in the first place? Well, it, it, it was certainly an issue that, you know, you know, ought to have been considered, you know, uh, 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 seriously. But you see, that thing came about at the tail end of the Ninth Assembly. And there was need for that 819, you know, uh, billion naira to be merged with this so that, you know, we can have... To be merged with the bond that had built up exactly. over 20-something so, yes, trillion. Because without it merging, wow. that means, you know, there wouldn't have been approval for the 890. So they, they disappeared as though it was as though they had to arm twist the Senate at that time in the guise of approving that 819 and then justifying. That means there was that overall approval to cover for the ones that had been done before that was not approved. Exactly, that was it. But you see, some wow. of us, you know, in the Senate... There are some that are against, some of that are for, but in the final analysis is the vote that counts. Mm -hmm. So whether you like it or not, if the vote what said side yes, were you on? I, I was on the, on the first of all, amend the CBN Act to accommodate what we want to do with ways and means. Because Section 38 is very, very clear as to what ways and means and how it can be managed. It is 5% of the last year's revenue Budgets. of yeah. government. So, and now that amount, you know, must be cleared within that financial year. Sadly, that amount cannot be securitized. You know, cannot be converted into treasury bills, cannot be converted into bonds and what have you. So, what we said at that point in time was, look, if we want to do this, let us amend the CBN Act. I meant Section 30 of the CBN Act to accommodate what we want to do. That was not done. That was not done. So they just approved it without amending it so, to go the right way. So that, that, that's what happened. Senator, I'm just, wow. you know, sitting now, I mean, this is, this is where we all are. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm looking for a nicer word because when we say it has finally hit the fan, you know what they say has hit the fan, and it is 
you know, affecting everybody, yeah. senators included. I mean, Senator Shomole made yeah. reference to that. Yeah. Uh, and this is where we are. Can members of the Ninth Senate, under whose watch, because not only did they have powers for appropriation, which the National Assembly has, but they also had powers for oversight to ensure that the laws are followed. Um, can members of the Ninth Assembly now, looking at the mess that the whole of the country is in, you know, can they really thumb their chest and say they did their best by this country? Well, there's within circumstances. Let's I, I mentioned the word doctrine of necessity. Because within their own powers at that material time, they had to do what they did in order to save, you know, uh, 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 certain expenditures to happen. Mm. Certain expenditures mm. that has thrown has dug a deeper hole. It's like, and people said this at that time that we were in a hole and we were digging another deeper hole to cover up the hole that we were in. You know, that's basically what we're, we're done. And right now, we're even deeper in the hole as it is. And there we have a Senate president who is now an ordinary member of the National Assembly. You know, saying, oh, no, this is what, no, not the figure we approved. This was this figure we approved. But at that time, there were senators who were crying that this was in contravention of the CBN Act. It was against the law. Can, can senators actually just say yes. it was okay for them to have gone against the law? They make no, laws. No, no, no. It was not against the law. It was a conditional approval. Remember? subject to the provision of how the money was used for and what was the source of how the CBN sourced the money to fund the ways and means. Where did they get the money from? Did they print it? Did mm. they borrow it? What, what, what do you mean, what they did? You yeah. just made reference to Section 30 of the yes. CBN Act, you know, which says that many ways and means must not exceed 5% of the it previous year's right. budget. Yeah, that yeah. is clear. There's no ambiguity in it. Yeah. You said that you recommended that that law, that act be amended because you understood the implications of yes. that. That was not done. Yeah. So that was the Ninth Senate breaking the law which it had made which it had made previously no like i said it is not breaking the law what is it it is a, it? a conditional we approve it subject to the executive providing the necessary information for the tenth assembly to consider what information did that was that condition how, how was the money used do you know i don't know and you're a senator this is what I'm saying. I don't know. That was conditional. But it has to be approved, but subject to the executive side giving us how the money was used. So it, was a, not a, it was not information that was passed to us until we left. You, you, know, you know this thing happened at the tail end of the Ninth Assembly. You talked about one of the conditions upon which that money was approved was that, you know, it was going to not be subject to securitization. That money had to be paid back, but not through... Uh, federal government saying it was going to be issuing us as bonds or treasury bills as the case yes. may be. But you are aware that at the, at the end of 2023 this current Senate, the 10th National the 10th, Assembly, yeah. mm -hmm. has now approved securitization of outstanding 7.3 trillion naira ways and means. Are you aware of that? Well, uh, well I'm not part of it. Uh, so I, I wouldn't know whether they did or not because I know there was, there was a bill that was put for the amendment of CBN Act. So I don't know whether it has passed through or it has not passed through. I don't know what stage it is. But technically speaking, Section 38 has to be amended to accommodate securitization. Okay. Well, Senator, I think Duma is quoted to have said, when the 22.7 trillion naira ways and means approval request was brought before the Ninth Senate, yeah. he insisted that the spendings made with it should be provided before the approval. Yeah. But the Senate went ahead and approved it. Yes. Why? Because it was, like I said, it has to be done because it was at the tail end. What would the Senate have done? To pass it to the 10th Assembly? So couldn't, couldn't it, the Senate have angry? said, look, we don't know this 22.7, you know, what was done with it. What are the details? We have no details whatsoever. So 22.7 trillion in abeyance, you know? We, we can't deal with that. The ones that you brought to request for us, as the law requires, we will approve that. Face, carry across. 
What would have been wrong with that? Well, uh, it, it, it was something that we considered, but you see, uh, it didn't, you know, consider that way because, you know, that aspect of the 819, which a lot of people, you know, don't want to look at it as a necessity thing to be done at that material time. You cannot do that without giving a temporary, what I call, a subjective approval of the 22 trillion. No, I, I don't understand that, but if you could go again, because the Senate, does it I mean the Senate passed the ways and means of over 22 plus something trillion that they had no details whatsoever about? The there it. was no detail. That is why the approval was subject to. You see, you can, you can have anticipatory approval. In a, it is known in administration, of in finance. Of 22 point something I mean, trillion. That Jesus. has built over a period Mara. of time. It didn't happen in one year. It happened over a period of... And the 16, Senate was not 17, aware of 18, this? 19, 20. The Senate was not aware of this? About, All through? About the, 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 pump, the purpose. The executive did not bring it. And there was not the... It was the executive that brought it to the Senate. It was not the uncovering of the Senate. So now I'm just looking at... Right now that we are where we are, can the Ninth Senate absolve itself of any blame? Um, is, will it be willing to take its own share and say, you know, we are also culpable in getting Nigeria and Nigerians to where we currently are. Yes, it may be, it may be a possible, you know, uh, a, a possibility to look at it from that way, because why was it done? It was anticipatory. Now, if it is the approval of the Senate based on anticipation of giving information, you know, it's what is the problem. Of course, the Ninth Assembly will have to take the blame. Mm -hmm. But it was anticipatory. And that is fundamental. In administration, in finance, everywhere in the world, you can approve something in anticipation of something to happen. No, but Senator, this is, this, now, for, for a lot of people, people see yeah. this as the Senate just putting their stamp on those who broke the law. No, I don't, see, I, I don't see, it is not a technical break in the law. Suppose I say, okay, I approve something subject to something happening. So you cannot effect it, you cannot effect the approval until that thing has happened. But and the thing it, didn't happen. So if the thing didn't happen, that means the approval is still pending, hanging. That is anticipatory approval. If you had an opportunity to revisit it again, would you say, no, you know what, anticipatory approval or not, we will not approve this? No, no, no. not that I will not approve. I would say, give me the information. What did you use the money for? Which is what Senator Ndema said he was asking. Exactly. Why couldn't the Senate just say, okay, look, he actually has a point. Why can't the sen Senate is, is, is establish an ad hoc committee now? The Senate can say, well, what has that money been used for? You know, they, they are talking about uncle borrowing and what have you. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. That that they will also probe that, uh, that, that, that program. That is a, that is a, so the purpose for the ways and means, you know, because, before you overdraft, because you grant overdraft, there might be terms of the overdraft. Everybody knows about it. What is the interest rate? What is the tenor of that overdraft? You know, what is the quantity uh, amount of that overdraft? What is it going to be used for? And what have you? So all these things must be compiled and be put forward. But mm. at, up till the time we left, there was no information along that line. Do you agree that this? is why, um, not in terms of anticipatory, because anticipatory is something that allowed in law, but what I'm saying that, you know, we must revisit it. Mm. Because it was anticipatory. Sen Senator, I know you have a degree in economics. I, that yes, that I know. And we're, we're, right now we know that we, we, our economy is in a problem, is in dire straits. As somebody who studied economics in school and who has also had the opportunity to practice a bit. In the financial when, sector. When you, some people have said, oh, our country doesn't follow economic rules. <laughs> well, you can just speak to that. When you look at where we are and the fact that everybody is crying about hardship, what should governments be doing from your knowledge and also the practicality of your experience? Now, let me, let, let me come that I could remember the last time we had it. I've always told uh, people that the fundamentals have not been addressed. We are just addressing, you know, something at the top. Our issue is not finance. Mm. Our issue boils down to what is the fair value of our Naira. Mm. 
the World Bank, the IMF, the Central Bank, everybody knows that our Naira is undervalued. We all know that. But we are using the palliatives or we are using instruments of overvaluation to arrest the situation. Take purchasing power parity. What a dollar can buy in America when, when you take uh, food, you know, that dollar when you translate it into an exchange rate today, you can have more. So our Naira is undervalued. So first of all, let us go to the fundamentals. And then what are those fundamentals? The fundamental is that we are running, you know, a, 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 a economic situation on the basis of financial, you know, uh, 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 financial uh, parameters. Well, Senator, let me ask First you, all, permit me to come in, uh, Senator, I, I apologize for butting in. I thought you had landed, actually. Well, let me take you back to that conversation that you and uh, Mark were having. Um, Channel Television put an explainer out on May 29, 2023, about um, how ways and means affects Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians. Part of that explainer says that in 2017, actual revenue of the federal government was 2.7 trillion naira, but ways and means stood at 1.1 trillion naira, representing 37.2%. In 2018, um, it rose as well. 2019 actual revenue, 2018 um, actual revenue was 3.87 trillion. Ways and means 2.1 trillion, on and on and on until 2021. And the even up until 2022, even there is an, uh, an infographic to the effect. But the law, Mark, what was calling your attention to, section 38, subsection 2 says, the total amount of such advances shall not at any time exceed 5% of the previous year's actual revenue of the federal government. I don't know where um, this anticipatory approval factors in here. Section, subsection 3A says, all advances shall, all advances made pursuant to this section shall be repaid as soon as possible and shall in any event be repayable by the end of the federal government's financial year in which they are granted. As Chamberlain said, and Malcolm said, these laws were blatantly abused. Who and who should be asking, should be answering questions about this particular issue based on the provision of the CBN Act. Now, let, let, let me clarify the issue again. You see, in administration, there's what they call anticipatory approval. You approve something... Accommodated something in the happen. law. For me, My apologies. If that just thing one second. Not happened, Senator, the just one second. Of the Ninth Assembly has not just taken just one second, Senator. Is it captured in law, this anticipatory approval? Is it captured in this particular law or in any law? No, it didn't say that, you know, approval must be non anticipatory or anticipatory. But what we are saying is that there was a need to, to look into this and have the approval. But the nice Senate said, no, we will approve it subject to, or we have approved it subject to A, B, C, D, and E happening. If A, B, C, D, and E ha does not happen, that means the approval of the Nine Assembly did not take place. This law, uh, uh, Senator, this particular anticipatory approval happened in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Five straight years. Um, is this still anticipatory? No. No. You see, the, 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 the approval of the West I means did not take place until 2023. It was a cumulative amount. So what happened in 2015, 2016, 2017, there were not anticipatory approval. This matter did not even come to the Senate, uh, uh, the 8th Senate or the 9th Senate, as the case may, may have been. It only came at the tail end of the President Mohamed Buhari's administration. And there was need to look into the West and means because it has become a serious issue in terms of deficit financing of the budget. Which goes back to the question Mark we asked you, Senator, that this happened and the members of the National Assembly 
were aware in 2017 it shouldn't have been anything above 5%. In 2017 alone it was over 30%. What happened to the Senate Committee on the CBN or, or Senate Committee on Banks and all of that? Shouldn't they also be answering questions? Yes, you know, uh, uh, in, in oversighting, in, 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 in overseeing, all, all these things, you know, they will all come to be. Now, for instance, the National Assembly is oversighting, you know, uh, the, the Banking Committee is oversighting, you know, Central Bank. Okay? Who is supervising Central Bank? Who? We need to know who is supervising Central Bank. We know who is uh, oversighting it, but who is supervising it? So it now, goes then to the issue that you know there, there there are some critical issues, much more than you know uh, just the management of the of the Western means. The whole gamut of uh, supervising CBN, you know, will come to question. Well, Senator. You just asked that question now. It is public knowledge that from time to time, the National Assembly through one committee or the other would summon the, the CBN, the CBN governor, to come and answer a question or two. Which committee of the, of the Senate or of the National Assembly does that? Shouldn't they be the ones that the question you are asking be directed to? Can you hear me, Senator? We'll come out of this probe. It does appear that my colleague is frozen now. I'm, I'm just wondering, what do you think will come out of this okay. probe, given the fact that, yeah, given the... Sorry, Ayo, if I may just conclude this, since uh, we're no, already in our closing moments. Yeah, so I just okay. wanted to confirm what yeah. you think will, will let me think come out of this. Because don't forget that members of the National Assembly who give that approval, anticipatory as it might be, were in the Ninth Assembly, some of them are now in the Tenth yeah. Assembly. Yeah. Can anything, can the Senate actually be probing itself and the approvals be granted? No, yes, Senate can, can probe itself. There's no reason why it cannot. You know, once you have, you have found out, you know, there are some, 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 some areas that you need to improve, in your own legislative agenda, of course you can approve it. I'm, I'm so happy that you know they established an ad hoc committee. In the in the in the ninth assembly, there was no active, there was no any ad hoc committee, you know, to 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 work on the ways and means. But now there is to probe, to investigate, to find out. In fact, much more. We need to know how the CBN even funded, you know, the ways and means over a period of time. Did they print money? Did they borrow money? Is it open market operation? How did they do it? Because there are also serious issues in terms of deficit financing that have pushed, you know, affected, you know, the inflation, all, all, all other areas. So I think, you know, it will be very, very interesting to see how the, the, the ad hoc committee is going to investigate it. And they must be honest and truthful in what they are going to do. If it is the previous Senate that is found to be, to, to be wanting, let them say so. If it is, you know, uh, uh, the, the administration, the executive side, let them say so. If it is CBN, let them say should so. Should it be done in front of cameras? I think it should be. It should be so open and everybody that is required to be done, you know, uh, to the, the previous managers of CBN must come to account on how right. did they fund it. All right, Senator Yusuf Yusuf, former chairman, Senate Committee on Special Duties. Thank you very much indeed for coming on today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. All right, Dixon Eka, we see your message talking about the government of President Tinubu with the renewed hope mantra being turned to government of blame game. The government is blaming the middleman in the agri food chain. If the middleman don't lift farmers' produce to the cities, how will the people in the city get their food? Will farmers come back to their farms in Benue and take their produce to Abuja, maybe by trekking the CBN and the FCC? are blaming the BDC operators. How many banks have been given foreign currencies and what amounts? And it goes on. Well, thank you very much. So that is the show today. We do thank you all for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Have yourselves a very good day. Whatever happens, please keep your head up. Thank you for watching. I'm Maokwe Oguyusu. Do have a wonderful and productive day. I'm Ayo Makinde.